The previous set of questions about free energy was focusing mostly on the concept. What do we know about enthalpy or heat? Endo versus exo. What do we know about entropy? The increase or decrease in randomness. Here, we're going to see a few different ways to apply the equations. So calculate delta G, the free energy, for this at 25. So we are at standard conditions here, even though it doesn't have that degree symbol. So it gives us this information here, telling us what our delta H and our delta S are. We don't know the um, standard heats of formation of any of these things, so we can't do it that way. So we do delta H minus T delta S. The key is to remember your joules versus kilojoules. So here we have that 95.7 in terms of kilojoules. So we need to change that 142.2 to kilojoules as well. The temperature of 25 goes to 298 because we're going to be dealing in Kelvin. We've got 95 minus that. We still have 53.5. Sign is really important. And units are really important for any thermo, whether it's delta H, delta S, or delta G. Here, we are asking about the standard heat of, or free energy of reaction for this combustion, but not, um, looks like we oxidize any of our unburn, so we end up with this weird reaction rather than a standard um, combustion. So we've got methane and a whole bunch of oxygen reacting to make CO2, water, and then we are making some ozone, so a little bit weird here. This delta G of formation, we've got it in kilojoules per mole, which is why they aren't each labeled. A lot of them are negative. They release free energy, but O3 or ozone requires it to make. Um, so here we have all of our products, negative times two negatives, four times our positive number. And then we've got um, just one of the methanes and eight. It didn't give us the value for oxygen because O2 is a gas under standard conditions, so it's zero. So for this, even though we are making something that requires free energy, everything else, we are releasing it, so we do have an overall negative. It could be negative 148.3 kilojoules, negative 148.3 kilojoules per mole reaction. Both of those would be acceptable. C comes back up to part A. It says it's not favorable at 25, which we know because it's positive. This one's unfavorable or requires 53.5 kilojoules of free energy. This one is favorable, releasing 148. So at what temperature does it become favorable? <clears throat> so we're looking at this, but the change from unfavorable to favorable is when we go from positive to negative. And the barrier between positive numbers and negative numbers is zero. So we plug everything back in and we solve for the temperature at which that happens. So we do a little bit of algebra here, we get it all by itself, and then we find out that it's not crazy hot, although much hotter than standard conditions, we get to a temperature of eight, excuse me, 673 Kelvin. Um, the last example here shows us that delta G can work just like delta H and even delta S, but it's much less common in terms of Hess's law. So if I have a reaction that I'm looking for, but instead of knowing delta H and delta S, or instead of knowing the energies or free energies of formation, I can do it by looking at the free energies of different reactions. I need to know about the energy released for the C3H8 propane. I have a reaction that has that, it's right there. So I have to reverse this because I want that as a product. That'll go from negative to ending up being positive down here. I wanna know about three carbons reacting. Well, carbon's right here. So I need to three times that reaction, three times that delta G. So I've got three times that negative 340 or 394. I've got hydrogen and oxygen making water. Well, I do want hydrogen as a reactant, but I want four of them. So two times two gives me four. When I double that delta G, two times that delta G tells me that now I have all of the correct components in all of the correct places. When I do this plus three times that, plus two times that, remembering that I reversed the sign when I flipped my equation, that shows me that this process releases a little bit of free energy through it. Next, we're gonna connect this to some other topics.